Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's service to us by way of his name and word. The service is morning prayer. For those of you visiting, the best way to follow along, put your bulletin in the back of the hymnal, and then simply go to the page indicated on the panel. Please stand. The bells will call us to worship. Open my lips. to save us.
behold, the Lord comes to save us.
reading is taken from Psalm 119, verses 153 to 168. Look on my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. Give me life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your mercy, O Lord. Give me life according to your rules. Many are my persecutors and my adversaries, but I do not swerve from your testimonies. I look at the faithless with disgust, because they do not keep your commands. Consider how I love your precepts. Give me life according to your steadfast love. The sum of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous rules endures forever. Princes persecute me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your words. I rejoice at your word like one who finds great spoil. I hate and abhor falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous rules. Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. I hope for your salvation, O Lord, and I do your commandments. My soul keeps your testimonies. I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and testimonies, for all my ways are before you. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. Dear brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, how are you to pray, Thy will be done? The German preacher Helmut Bielke observed that this is a dangerous petition to pray, for we are in fact praying against ourselves. We are not asking to bring what he wants into alignment with what we want, just the opposite. We are imploring him to bring our fickle and unpredictable wills into harmony with his good and gracious will. This is not without suffering or tentatio. Tentatio is a, a trial or a, a suffering or a, a temptation. It's difficult. There's a tension with tentatio. We, we kind of feel that tense about it. This is not without that kind of feeling. For what we are asking God to do is to, to break and hinder our enemies. And those enemies include the devil, the world, and my own sinful self. Yeah, I've met the enemy, and it's me. To meditate, to meditate on God's word is to become a target. For example, what happens when a receiver receives, catches the ball in a football game? I'll tell you what happens. The other team, everyone on that other team goes after him, right? And what are they trying to do? Pardon? Try and hit you? And what do you call that in football? You tackle them. Yeah, so everybody's going after them to tackle them. Now think about this. For you as a Christian, as you meditate on God's word, you got the devil, the world, and your own sinful self seeking to tackle you. Think about that. You're a target. Everyone goes after you to bring you down. Now, think about this. 
The devil, the world, and our own sinful selves are on the same team. And what are they trying to do? To defeat the Word of God. And even better than tackling, right, would be to pry the football out of the guy's hand. Right? Like that. Football! Now, well, thanks, Anno, for sharing with me the Word of God in the form of a football. By the way, there are a lot of preachers who fumble the Word of God, too. They don't preach it. How do you know whether a preacher is preaching the Word of God? Where do you, how can you check up on it? By looking where? In the Bible. Yeah. Because if the preacher is, if the pastor is not preaching the Word of God, then what good is it? It's no good for you. No good for you. And think about when we, when we fumble that word of God. We, we need that word of God in our lives. And by the way, like Anno picked up the football to bring it to me, what are you called to do? To bring God's word into the hearts and lives of others. And what you say. And what you do. And in how you do it. In the Catechism's explanation of the third petition of the Lord's Prayer, we hear these words. Listen carefully. God's will is done when he breaks and hinders or defeats every evil plan and purpose of the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh, which try to prevent us from keeping God's name and letting his kingdom come. God seeks to, to break, to defeat the devil, the world, and even our own sinful selves. And the way he does it is through his word. So that's why it's so important for you to be doing your devotions, to access the word of God every day. Just like you brush your teeth every day, do your devotions every day. Hear the word every day. And then pray that word of God back to God. And you know what? That's a good defense against the devil, the world, and your own sinful self. And by the way, you gain a lot of yardage. <laughs> As his word has its way in your life, and there's meaning and purpose to your life. That's what God gives through his word. Now, When the devil, the world, and our own sinful selves are at work, these are the very sources of our affliction, of the things that go bad with us. They seek to bring us down. And the more, though, that we love God's precepts, precepts the more we love God's word, the more we become a target for spiritual attack. Wow. Our sinful nature just doesn't want God's will to be done. Because, admit it, you want, I want what I want. And that is often something different than what God wants for me. So there's a tension there. And do you remember how Jesus felt that tension too in the Garden of Gethsemane? He goes, he said, uh, Lord, if it's possible, take this cup from me, the suffering that I'm about to go under, undergo. If possible, take this cup from me. He doesn't want to go through that. But then look what he says next. But not my will. Your will be done. And Jesus fulfilled God's will. And what is God, God's will? What does he want? He wants every single one of us, every human being, past, present, and future, to be with him. But the devil, the world, and our own sinful selves, we can be our own worst enemies. We're against what God wants by our sinful nature. St. Paul puts it this way. The mindset of the sinful flesh is hostile to God. 
And then we hear from verse 16 in our text from the psalmist, officials persecute me without cause. That would be the world. Even people in high places. People who maybe serve in government places. Some don't like the Christians. And so they persecute without cause. And we've seen that happen in the past even. Many Christians were lost their lives simply for clinging to God's word, for confessing that Jesus is Lord. And then Jesus said, quote, if the world hates you, know that it hated me first. Wow. And then John writes, do not be surprised if the world hates you. So we need to pray that God's will be done. And as we focus in on the scriptures, as we meditate on them, as we do our devotions, as we support one another in the receiving and being taught the word of God every single Sunday, every single Sunday, we're, we're equipped to hold on to the blessings that God has given us in Christ, to hold on to that in faith. Because the devil is working to stop it. And you know what he says to you and to me? He whispers into our ears that these trials and tribulations for simply confessing that Jesus is Lord, ah, they're not worth it. Give it up. He wants you to drop the ball. He wants you to give up the word. There's one thing the devil does and one thing alone and that is to get you away from Jesus. And the way he does that is by separating you from the word. By making you to fumble the word of God. And you fumble often, don't you? So do pastors. The good thing we have Christians like Anno to give it back. <laughs> and like you. To keep sharing the word of God even when people fumble. And by the way, I've had people who I shared with, the word of, shared with them the word of God, they're about to die, and they never had the word of God. And then they hear the word of God, and they have life and peace with God. They have life in the glory of God of heaven, such as the power and authority of God's word. Now, God uses the, the tension that we have with the world and the devil and our sinful selves to, to strengthen our grip on his word. God's will is done, we hear from the catechism, when he strengthens and keep us, keeps us firm in his word and faith as long as we live. So whether facing persecution or illness, whatever it is that causes you, to the Christian, to face this agonizing internal struggle, the devil, the world, and your own sinful self, the Holy Spirit uses this tentatio, this tension, to lead you back to the Word of God. Anybody ever been to a Packer training camp? I have. Anybody else? Yeah? Well, they do a drill. And typically, they make, like the running back or the receiver, run through this line. There's a line of all the Packers on one side, on the other side, and then the running back or the receiver has to run through in between them, and everybody on the team is trying to punch the ball out of their hands. They practice that so that you practice holding tightly onto the ball so that you don't fumble, because if you fumble, typically you lose the game, right? Well, think of tentatio that way, this tension. God strengthens our grip on his word so that we never, ever lose that forgiveness, that life and peace that he gives to us in and through his word. In football, they want you to want the football to become part of your body, part of who you are. Well, it's the same with the word of God. God wants the word of God to be with you, part of who you are. And that's why you learn the word of God by heart. That's why you keep hearing the word of God. You keep speaking the word of God. 
You keep confessing the word of God and his ways. You love his precepts, his laws. You love his gospel in and through which he forgives your sins. And you know that you can't part with it. So it's, it's, it's like who you are. And that's what God is doing here by his spirit at work through his word, delivering you all the blessings of heaven. He made you a child of God in the water and word of holy baptism and promised to be here for you, come what may, through his word. When you think about it, the Christian life is one long Advent season. We are waiting on a Savior who has already come, who comes even now, and who promises to come again in glory. He's already won our salvation. And in Christ, through his word, nothing and no one can take it away. Not the devil, not the world, not your own sinful self. Jesus has died in our place, defeated our enemy, and he has been raised for our justification. God's word is our certain hope of life with God and with each other. So clinging to the football of your word, O Lord, as the psalmist says, we wait for your salvation. And while we wait, we face the spiritual attacks from all those who are in opposition to the Lord. But like the psalmist, our confidence is not in ourselves, but in God's sure and certain word. And so we pray, Lord, according to your mercy, give me life. The sum of your word is truth. Your will be done. Amen. Please stand for the candle.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you.